Okay, today we're going to be making a video game on food webs and the animal that we're going to be focusing on is the shark and the first thing we need to do is delete the cat by right clicking and, and going delete. From here we need to press the load sprite button which you'll find in the center and obviously it's an animal so we'll open that up and scroll through until you find something in there that you um, you think you could use. I recommend using a shark um, because they've got lots of species underneath them that they do eat for food. Um, so I'll use a shark and I'll add it. And there's our shark that we're going to use for our game. Um, and I'll show you how we go about making him move and so on. Now our shark's in the center and now we need to add some code so that we can have him move and I've got my code here and I'm going to show you what these things actually do remember we put our code into our um, this area here and that's known as our scripts and it basically is like a recipe and it says exactly what is going to happen in our game now the very first one we need to add is a when click button now that means when the green flag is clicked it's going to do everything that appears underneath it from here we need to add a um, new statement in it says forever if drag that in the next thing we need to do is press operators and drag in a greater than sign which you'll find and that drops in right into that spot so that's now what we've got inside of that we need to go into sensing and drag that into the first box and change it to say mouse pointer. Now in this little box here we need to say 10 and we're pretty close to having our shark controlled at the moment. What we now need to do is go back to um, motion and drag in a point towards and a move change it from move three steps to move oh sorry move 10 to move three steps and change the point towards to mouse pointer now when we move back our game which I'll do in a second we should be able to actually see that the shark is being moved um, which is obviously what we want press the green flag and the shark now follows the mouse And if I stop, he stops. There's our control scheme for our game. We'll press stop and we'll go on to the next part. Now that we've got our shark sorted, we now need to add in a sprite that is can be eaten by the shark. Now, I would recommend that that's probably going to be a fish. And I might try and load up a sprite that's a fish. Um, definitely not going to be a bat or any of those types of creatures because they're not in the same environment but let's have a look and find a fish that one looks great press OK and he's added now he's probably gonna be too big there like that so I'm gonna click on him and go to costumes and go edit and I'm gonna make him a bit smaller by pressing the shrink button and there he is, that's a bit better. We've got our shark that's really big and our little tiny fish. Now, that's a pretty accurate food web. Um, sharks do eat fish, um, and there's probably other things that we, they do eat, um, but we might add those in later on. From this point, we now need to actually program the, the little fish. So we click on the little fish icon, and we've now got a blank canvas to add our code. You guessed it, we start with a when clicked, and we then go to looks and put in show. And that means that as soon as we press the green flag, the little fish is going to appear and he's going to point in direction 90 degrees. So that means he's going to point and face up. What we now need to add is a forever loop. Now that means that everything that's inside there will be repeated forever until we press the, the red flag. Inside of the forever loop, we now need to have a move button so that he moves all the time, move two steps. 
we're going to have a turn um, turn coding and it's going to be turn not 15 degrees but it's going to be pick random so it's randomly picking the degrees that it's going to turn now it's going to be between negative 20 and 20 degrees <clears throat> the last thing we need to add is if on edge bounce and what that means is if the little fish hits the the edge of the game he's going to bounce off in the opposite direction um, which will be handy for our for our game. The next thing we need to add is an if button. Now you'll see the if button is right here and I need to drag it and put it inside underneath the if on edge bounce so that it's like this like like the following and we now need to go to sensing and select color and drag that into our little box. Now what this is saying is if if the color purple is touching the the color which is another type of purple then a certain action is going to happen. Now what we need to do is code it so that when the little fish touches the shark he gets eaten. Now we do that by clicking in the in the box here, clicking on our little fish and you'll see the color changed. And then we click on this box and we need to click on the shark and that says that if that color purple which is our little fish touches this color which is our big shark then the following actions are going to happen now you'll see that it enables a broadcast now we go to control and we go to the broadcast button drag that in and we need to press the drop down and go new and the broadcast is got me so every time the little fish gets hit, touched by the big fish he broadcasts an action called got me what then happens is he hides which means it looks like he disappears like he's been eaten and then he waits for three seconds which means he's off off the field for you know off the stage for a little bit and then he goes to a specific location to start his start um, the action over again. And the action is he goes to negative 200. Um, I'll put in another spot here. Negative 200. What I'm setting now is just where the little shark is going to start at the end of his matches. So once he disappears this part here says where he will then start again and the final piece we need to put in is that he will show as soon as he's gone back to that spot now let's have a bit of a look as to what that turns out like <clears throat> little shark and little fish little fish he's moving around swimming and as soon as he gets eaten he disappears and as I remember we three seconds later he reappears again in a different location here we go. Disappears. And here he is again. Reappears. So there's our game, but it's not quite finished because we want to make it a bit more uh, exciting than what it currently is. It's pretty cool at the moment, but we want to make it even even cooler. Oh, there's the fish. So we press stop and let's add some more stuff to our game. Now we've got our fish and our shark moving around. We want to actually make it a bit more like a game so that when you catch a fish you get it like a score uh, and then you can have a best score and so on now we do that by going up to the top here and dragging out a piece of code that says when I receive got me which is the broadcast we got before so when I receive got me it's going to play a sound and the sound we're going to do is something that we record so you hit the record button in there and you can use your microphone to record a sound. Now I'm going to record a, a chomp sound, uh, and that will be what the shark makes when it actually gets it, hits the little fish. Chomp, chomp. And now you'll see that when I uh, when the shark received got me, it plays that silly sound that I just made. 
and then it goes and goes back to normal and then allows um, the shark to continue on. Now, you might not be using a shark, so you might use a different sound. It could be something related to your animal. From here, we need to add our scoreboard. And this is a little bit, this is a little bit cool. We go to variables and we go make a variable. And our variable is going to be called, well, it's a score, but I don't want to call it score. I want to call it fish. And you'll see that fish now gets added to the top. And what I want to do is, when I receive got me, I want to change the fish by one. Now let's watch what happens. When I move the shark around and touch the fish, it'll make the chomp noise, and it's going to change the score by one. The shark and the fish will come back, and then we go ahead again. Chomp, chomp. And there's our game. You can see that the score goes up every fish that we get. However, there's one thing that's a problem here. We need the score to be reset back to zero when we start the game. Now, to do that, we need to actually drag this little piece of code out and chuck it underneath that one there. So when clicked, we set fish to zero. Now watch what happens when I press the green flag this time. The score goes back to zero. Touch the fish and there we go. We've made a little game where the shark eats the fish. Very easy when there's only one fish though. So what we want to do is duplicate the little fish by right clicking him and pressing duplicate. And do that about, I don't know, five times. So we've got five fish and It'll make it a bit more interesting if we move them around. They start in different spots. And if we press the green flag, here we go. We've got our little game, chasing the fish. Now I've seen a bit of a problem with this game. The problem is that <clears throat> the little fish disappear when they touch any part of the shark that's blue. So even if they touch the tail, they're going to disappear. Probably not desirable. So rather than clicking blue, we want to change it so that it's the teeth that are doing the chomping. No, not, not the change it to the teeth. So now actually has to touch the teeth or the eyes and in order for it to disappear. So there's our game. One last thing that I'd like you to do is to go down to the stage button and select backgrounds and go edit. And considering that we're, we're dealing with sharks and so on, it would be pretty good idea to actually draw yourself a background that you know is the sea so we can just quickly draw a background there change the whoops, change the color um, there we go you could put in some the ground of the ocean perhaps down the bottom let's just add it and there's our little sharks, and there's our little game. Now, it's obviously up to you that if you, you decide to play with a different organism, but make sure that you have it so that it is realistic and that it's actually a part of that animal's food web. Good luck.